following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Hey, Blue. We are the Baseball Umpires Podcast for umpires by an umpire. We are more than just balls and strikes and outs and saves. Listen in for tips, rule interpretations, equipment and attire reviews, interviews with umpires of all levels, and some funny stories that might come up every time out on the baseball field. If you're new to the field as an umpire or a seasoned vet in the world of umpiring, then this is the podcast for you. Hey Blue, the Umpire Podcast is part of the 1420 Sports Bar group of podcasts on the Belly Up Network. All right, the Hey Blue uh, Umpire Podcast for umpires by an umpire for this uh, March the 20th, 2023. Happy back doing this for you guys. Uh, today's show is brought to you by Manscaped and Manscaped.com. Use promo code 1420SCAPE at Manscaped.com today for 20% off and free shipping on all your men's personal and women's personal grooming needs today at Manscaped. Don't let the, don't let the name fool you, ladies. You can use the Manscaped stuff as well. Anyways, uh, make sure you get, get uh, your Manscaped packages and you Use our promo code uh, before it runs out. I think at the end of March here, but uh, you can get them anywhere. But use ours; and it puts a couple of bucks in the in the podcast pocket. But anyways, uh, the Hey Blue podcast been been away for a few weeks. I uh, needed a little bit of uh, Brent time away from the game of baseball. Uh, overloaded my my uh, coconut a little bit. Needed to get away uh, from everything a little bit. The the had to take care of the six inches between your ears. It uh, it become it can become a little bit stressful at times throughout the. Uh, throughout the baseball season as we kind of overloaded things throughout the year and didn't have any off time, but uh, took some and now we're back and ready to go and uh, happy to be back on the air with the Hey Blue uh, Baseball Podcast. Thank you very much for everybody who's uh, been following and listening to to the show over the uh, over the years. We've got some things planned for the uh, the Hey Blue Podcast coming up with some listeners who contacted me in the, in the last couple of weeks. So we're going to get this thing up and going on a weekly basis or I mean, even bi-weekly basis. Got a lot of stuff going on. Anyways, more importantly, the baseball uh, baseball season got going here in Southern Alberta over the weekend. It was a great uh, great week, and weather was fantastic. The couple I, I did two games. There was four games in total. I was involved in two of them. Weather, like I said, the weather was great. It was it cooperated. It was a little bit chilly, I guess, uh, plus 12, 13 degrees, I think, by the time we got done the game on uh, Sunday afternoon and Saturday afternoon is one of those deals too. So it was a lot of fun to be out, out on the field, uh, get that, get going back out there, put the clinics behind us for a little bit, but you can never stop, stop learning. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, positive steps that I saw over the weekend from the two guys who were part of our clinics all winter long. And you can see some positive steps. We'll get into that in, in half a second, how they, how their weekend went. It was, it was fantastic to see those guys out there applying the, the stuff that we taught them throughout the winter time. But anyways, um, one thing that I did, I got to the game a little bit earlier than usual on on Saturday um, Saturday morning, afternoon kind of deal. The game was at noon, so I got there about 10.30, and I, I saw on uh, on Instagram or Facebook that the PBA guys had got the field ready. And I said, this, this is a little bit too fishy because they, they showed the field that it was done, and there was no snow on the field. The, the, the snow was cleared. And I was like, well, that doesn't make any sense. The way the, the, the field is situated down there, there's no way all that snow is removed. And I'm, I'm kind of I'm glad that I did go down there. The field was in great condition, the playing surface itself, but the warning track – all the way around the field was a uh, was a little bit damp still, a little bit frozen still. There was some some ice, there was puddles, and it was good to have a, a, a chat with Andrew down there at the field from from the Prairie Baseball Academy. The the June, the JV coach had a quick chat with him, had a quick chat with Les McTavish, the Vauxhall Academy coach, and we discussed what the ground rules were going to be. And I thought it was a good chance to to do that before the game, just for the simple fact that. It would have been a lot more to to try to get it in than a two minute conversation at the home plate meeting. So we've had a quick t- a quick chat about what 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 we decided to do, how we decided to play the game, and the the warning track all the way around basically on the fence it was just throw your hands up, uh, ground rule double if it went out there because there was a lot of snow out there. Even if the ball wasn't wasn't um, lodged in the snow, but we decided in the warning track and everything else behind behind home plate and uh, by the dugouts and everything else. So that that was basically b- b- ball out of play and that's over the fence and the award runners from there. So it was a, it was a good conversation to have with these guys to to say how we're going to do it. And like I said, it wasn't it wasn't uh, a, a two minute pregame conversation. I did a field walk around because you never know what can change during the off season. A lot of people who listen to this podcast. They, uh, we work at the same fields over and over throughout the years, and and you, you you just imagine that things aren't going to change a whole bunch, and they usually don't. And there's not a lot of things that change over the off season. You you usually hear about it from teams and everything else, but it's always good to go for a pregame walkabout. My partner wasn't there as of yet. Like 
I said, I was there quite early, but I went for a pregame walk around, noticed some different holes in the fence that maybe they didn't see, some some disrepair, some stuff that happened throughout the uh, the winter months because it can get a little bit hectic, a little bit uh, drastic up here in Canada with the winter. So some things can happen. So I did a walk around the field. And I, I highly recommend that people do that when they go to a field for the first time during the during the uh their first games of the season, which are coming up for basically everybody in the in the coming days and weeks ahead. A lot of people have been going, going for a long time. Some people never stopped, obviously, right? So, but I highly recommend going for a walk around the field, seeing what's up, seeing what's going on, and, and making making sure there isn't any new new holes in the fence or something that the players or the coaching staff of, of these teams may may not have seen. And then you get get a feel of yourself, and then you go down afterwards. I went down and I told. My, my partner before the game started, what what I saw and what the ground rules were going to be, and it, it turned out really really well. And to do that, and like I said, I highly recommend people going around doing that, no matter if it's if it's a, a June game or or whatever. But your first time, maybe going to a field, go and check out some nooks and crannies on those fields because sometimes during the home plate meeting and during the ground rule discussion, sometimes things get just get lost in translation because a lot of times the uh, the coaches who are giving the ground rules at times they forget about it because they have a, just a, a, they have a preset, what's the, a preset script that they have. And they, they may not see something because they, they, they say it so often throughout the season, they don't know what the rules might be themselves. And then you can say, yeah, but this, I saw this, what, what's this, what's that. And there's some rules, uh, some ground rules that you might, that you might uh, bring up. that'll help you out throughout the game and throughout the season. And it can only do you, do you a little bit of good, a little bit of information, never hurt anybody. A lot of information can hurt a, li- a little bit. We'll get that into, into half a second um, throughout the season or throughout the winter. We, we say a lot of stuff at these clinics and you hope that a lot of it gets that a lot of it gets um gets digested into your brain and a lot of stuff happens a lot going on and you remember you remember a lot of stuff and you, it does it's hard to really put it into effect until you get out on the field um and even beforehand we me and james had a a nice chat about what the stuff that we were going to do during the game stuff we, we needed to make sure we worked on reminders of stuff that that he uh he learned over the off season and stuff that he that he had questions out throughout throughout the off season throughout our clinics and that that went great throughout the winter months and James had a, a great, uh, he was, I could tell he was a little bit nervous as we got, as we were, before we were going out there and we were getting dressed and he was asking some questions that were a little bit, a little bit odd, but we'll get to that in half a second. But the one thing I highly recommend, especially for the people who are getting a little bit older and for, for those who are going to watch us on YouTube later on, uh, thank you very much for doing that, by the way, uh, do as I say, not as I do sometimes. Uh, for some reason, I don't know why, and I have no idea what, what was going through my head. And I felt it on Sunday morning quite a bit, but I was a little bit stiff. So I highly recommend once again, as your seasons get going, everybody, and those of you who haven't done a game yet, or if you have done a game, doesn't this doesn't hurt at any time during the season. And a lot of people forget about it a lot, especially a, a post-game stretch, but a pre and post-game stretch of your legs, of your back, of your muscles, the whole bit is it can't hurt you. If it's even for five minutes as you're talking with your partner about what the uh, the pre-game stuff's going to be and post-game little breakdown of the game, it doesn't hurt to just stretch a little bit and get everything back to normal because you a a lot of people who don't take clinics throughout the the season or the off season and everything else they uh, they don't tend to use the same muscles so it's very uh, it's highly recommended that you go out there and you use your muscles and you stretch them out pre and, pre and post game there's enough time when you're having your adult beverage after the game to stretch your legs out a little bit and before before the game like i said when you're having your your pre-game meeting about what uh, coverage and everything else that's going to happen it's very important to be stretching out during during that that time because you man oh man i was one sore ukrainian on uh, on sunday morning but it, i stretched before and after the game i did yesterday and everything was was hunky dory this morning when i got out of bed so it's a it's a very important thing and drinking lots of water and staying hydrated probably doesn't matter how cold it is a hydration is very important it keeps keeps the muscles going i'm not a i'm by no means a uh a physiotherapist or whatever it is i i don't know the, the science of it all but staying hydrated getting the water in you before the game gets going and making sure you're hydrated throughout the game is very important too so do as i say not as i do we, we talk about it all the time and for some reason i just skipped it but before you get to go out there for your first uh, games this season your first you call some pitch before you know it, it's a nine inning game and then bang you're you're seeing a couple hundred pitches and sometimes 300 pitches and all of a sudden your legs might be a little bit sore yeah we took clinic we did clinics all all winter long but that was only for maybe Maybe 20 pitches, take a rest, 20 pitches, take a rest, and the like. So it's very important to get your stretch on and the whole bit. 
Uh, like I was saying before we got going here uh, on this, the, this next little topic here, and, and don't, and, and don't, I'm not saying that all rules aren't important. All rules are very important, but some rules are more important than others. It sounds like Animal Farm. Uh, all, all animals are created equal. Just some are more equal than others. Uh, don't go and like don't don't at me later on and say that Brent's that not saying that this rule is important. That rule is not important, and the rule this one's all BS. That's not what I'm saying at all. What I'm getting at is that there are some rules that are more important than others. Before the game, James, I could see he was a little bit nerved up, was the highest level of baseball that he's ever he's ever done. I was really proud of him, the way he he, he did out there. And it was he had a great game. He was on the bases for the first the first game, then he was on the plate the second one. Uh, but anyways, before the first game started, I could tell he was a little bit nervous. And he was asking some questions that were a little bit like, okay, it's just a baseball game. You're going to be fine. Just take take the stuff that we learned over the offseason. It's just it's actually easier to umpire uh, the higher level of baseball. It might be a little bit faster, but it's easier to hire to umpire high levels of baseball because the the errors aren't there and you don't have to have read steps everywhere and everything else like so i had a he had uh, he started asking me a bunch of questions i said hey man you just just relax let's go have some fun let's have a let's have a good time don't worry about all that other stuff like we we, we fill these guys with so much information and these guys are and when umpires are getting into it it's, it's greatly appreciated they they go online a lot and they start reading a lot and they ask a lot of questions which is a very good thing and i'm not saying that, that people shouldn't but there's sometimes you can ask too many questions and you can get information overload and it can be a, a situation where you you don't you're not asking the right questions and the, the game the game will become so overwhelming because you'll you'll start missing things because the balls and strikes and outs and safes are starting to get missed because you're worried about stuff that you think you need to see or something that, that you were you were told that that's going to happen no matter what and james asked the question I'm, I'm not making fun of him at all and i'm not like and once again i'm not saying don't follow the rules but like i said some rules are more important than others and james was asking about pitchers going to their fingers and i said hey man like if you see it maybe say something to the pitcher, but don't make a spectacle of it. I said, just say, you can't do that. And then I, I made, I made a point to him. I said, James, like if, if you're, you're going to see out there that the baseballs we're going to be using are going to be, they're, they're going to go over the, the backstop. They're going to go in the parking lot. They're going to roll in mud. They're going to dry them off as good as they can. And they're going to, we're going to reuse them. I said, the ground's wet. So they're, they're uh, a pitcher going to his fingers isn't going to change change a whole bunch about the baseball like isn't we're not like we're using brand new ones just rubbed up so i said like i i understand that you want to do it right and you want to do it properly but there's certain rules and certain situations that you can probably just forget about and not worry about it too much. And he said, well, I like to do things properly. I said, well, I'm not telling you not to do it improperly, but I'm just saying there are ways you can, uh, as long as there's not going to be a competitive advantage to a situation like that, don't draw attention to yourself. And that's kind of, kind of something that I don't know if a lot of um, umpires, a lot of people who listen to this show, if they agree with me, that uh, there's there's ways you can go about policing that. And like I've said before, you shouldn't go out there to be a cop. You're more of a, uh, of a de detective finding information more than a cop who's th throwing guys in jail and everything else right so you're more of a private eye than anything else out there so it's one of those situations where you can you can uh, you can you can aside a few of the rules i'm not saying get rid of them i'm not saying don't don't uh don't don't have the rule book followed throughout the game but there are certain things some rules are more important than others like animal farm it, that that can come up with a situation because a lot of things you you don't have to and he got started talking about box and i said you know what i said i would i would rather you, you call box if you see a box call a box because now the coaches this early in the season before they get into their conference play and the like they want to see these and the tournaments and stuff and the best of the west and whatever else they got going on up here in canada they want to see the umpires calling box to make sure that the pitchers are following the rules because some you go to some places and, it, and it's bought crazy and then other places not so much so I, I said james if you see a box today don't be afraid to call it and i said like if you see it call it like that, that's something that coaches want to see on a regular basis yes these games are early and i i kind of hate saying that that the games are early because every game means something to, to some kid every every game might, might there, there might be a scout in the stands there might be a video being taken or something so we have to do our, our best on a nightly basis to make sure that that kid's having the best opportunity he can to uh, to do his job properly and if he's having a box situation you, you can you can talk to these kids about that and, and stuff and call it because like i said coaches want you to call those because it's very it's very very important to to do that uh another little situation we had is on uh one of our last clinics i think it was uh, the, the members of the southern Alberta Empire association we were all there matt uh brandon and tyler cody wasn't there but we all were 
four of us were there. We had a pretty, we had a good turn of about 20, 22 people out there. And there was a lot of stuff being bant- bantied about and bantied about because it was the last one we were going to do. We might get one before everything gets going again. But there was a lot of information that was getting thrown about. It was almost too much information. It was information overload because there was four of us answering questions. There was a lot of external chatter, which is never a good thing because it just becomes more and more and more. And some, some questions can get um, misunderstood because there's so much talk being had and a lot of chatter being had vi- a, a lot throughout the, throughout the, that event. So it, it was kind of the one situation that happened. It was after I left the game on uh, Saturday afternoon. I decided to go for an adult beverage. I was at the ballpark enough and there was a, a double header. I watched the first four or five innings and watched the guys were having a, having a great game. And I said, yeah, they're, they're in good, good hands, Dan and, and, and James. And now, yeah, good enough that they're, 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 they're doing fine. But after the game was done, Dan uh, sent me a couple of messages once some, answering some questions about what was going on. And there was one about a, a check swing. And I, I instantly went back to a situation. I, I know. And then I read the message and I was, I knew exactly what he was talking about in the exact moment that he would, that, uh, that I heard, uh, what was heard and what was said were two different things because there was something a bit, bit confusing about check swings with a left-handed batter, nobody on base, guy, two-man system, on and on it went. And if people who listen to this, they know what I'm talking about. But it was it was interesting. I was like, oh yeah, I know exactly what happened. Uh, James decided because he heard what he heard was don't don't check with the, the your, your your partner when with a left-handed batter with and nobody on. But what what was said was something completely different. But what James heard was was one thing. So he did not he denied the appeal and he said he couldn't appeal on on the check swings, which he was wrong. And we talked about it yesterday before before the game or before his second game started. We had a conversation and I said, "Here's what you heard, right?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I said, "Well, okay, that's that that's where we might have went wrong, and that's where where things can get a little bit uh, a little bit uh, out of sorts. So you have to really watch what the information because these guys they they learn so much and because they're, they're coming from uh, not a source of nothingness and not a source of um, not knowing anything, but it's a source of information overload. And the rule book can, can become overwhelming and positioning can become overwhelming. And you get out on a field on a higher level that you've never done before. And that can be overwhelming and you get a bit nervous and everything else. And it just it, a, a lot going on to go here, do this, do that and the like. And you, you wish you would have had more time in the in the off season to uh, to get to more scenarios, but you can't do everything. You can't do everything inside and you only have every other weekend because other companies commitments and things like that and people have lives and, and, and everything else so you can't get everything down that you want to during the season so that's why doing games and having mentorship and having guys you can talk to afterwards and having guys who you can work with that maybe could have worked at a higher level a little bit, bit more experience and you get get to, to, to work with these guys and it helps them a lot because the, your brain can get into a bit of a tizzy and you can just like I said information overload can happen to, to the best of us and you see stuff that you like you hear stuff you're, you're like what the heck was that about and then you you see how it gets overloaded, and then I saw some some uh, some things that Dan was doing great, some things that James were doing great that they weren't doing last year. That just uh, that really could put a bit of. Uh, and I hope the other guys, when they see it, the other the other guys who were helping us uh, um, teach these clinics, when they when they get out and see these guys, they'll see that the, the vast improvement these guys had. But the be- the only thing you can do to make sure you get better, yeah, go to clinics and and do some reading and watch YouTube videos and the like and everything else. Listen to podcasts. It's uh, there, there's a lot of stuff that guy can do, but there, there's nothing quite like going to a game and being out on the field doing a game because you have a a scenario where all the stuff comes together, right? There was a, a fly ball to uh, D- D- Dan was on the inside while he was working the base. There was a fly ball. A guy was going to tag from second, and he lined it up properly. He did, and he goes, "Okay, now, now I, he remembered why he did that. He did a couple, got happy feet a little bit, but he was good, and he understood what we were talking about. And when you get out on the field, we did that inside. We did that little that little drill inside, but when we got outside, it made a lot more sense because you have the bit the, the the vastness of the field, and you have you have the players that are running and moving." And everything else so if there's there's nothing quite like actually doing games and getting out there and practicing and being mentored and talking to guys before during and after a game saying this is how you're supposed to do it this is why you're doing it and it, it, it all starts to click in uh, i remember years ago when i first went to uh, umpire school a long long time ago and i got a story about that one from a facebook post i put up there on i think it was saturday morning but anyways they uh it all kind of clicks in when you're, you're doing games and you're, you're doing all, all the drills and everything else. Okay. Yeah, this makes sense. This makes sense. But you also have five weeks straight where they, they can piece it all together and you're on the field the entire time in sunny, sunny Florida. Right. So it's a little bit different than in, in cold Lethbridge, Alberta in the, in the wintertime where you can't get outside as much as you would like, but it all, 
kind of comes together and the more games you do and the more scenarios you, you get into uh, as an umpire, you see, okay, that, okay, that's why we do this. And that's why we do that. And it all came together for, uh, for a few of the situations where Dan and where, and James got things where, where they were doing them right. And it didn't have to be told. It was just habitual on, on a ground ball. You do this on this, you do this. Like it was just very, very uh, mechanical and methodical. And it was very, it was very uh, refreshing to see. It was kind of a, I gave myself a bit of a pat in the back later on. And like I said, the, the guy, Guys who also did the clinics with me, Matt, Cody, um, Brendan, and Tyler, they should all get, also give themselves in the back for for helping these guys out become better umpires because these two guys were better right off the bat. It's only the first uh, the first three games that they did this season. I mean, there's going to be hiccups. There always is, no matter what. But they 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 were good. They they, they had no altercations. A couple little things here and there. Was the judgment 100? percent Probably not. Was my judgment 100 percent that I was out there? Probably not. I had some whackers at first, so I'm I'm 99 sure I got them all right. But you know what? It doesn't much matter because the, the guys uh, they're out no matter what right they call them out or, or safe that's that's the way the rule ends up but no i had some i had some, some some tough calls and but it was good and i found i found for myself being being out there as well seeing some pitches that we did throughout the winter months there and and doing it that i found myself not uh having a, a bit of a rust on that like I, i've had in the past where you get out there and all of a sudden you're seeing curveballs and breaking balls and sliders and this and change-ups. I, I found myself having a, a lot better game, my, my first game out in the season, seeing pitches because you, you saw some pitches throughout the year. So if you have a chance to go and see some pitches as an umpire before the season starts, take take advantage of it. Like I said before, most of these associations, most, most of these uh, um, these travel teams or whatever you want to call them they have pitch machines they're still doing things inside and and, and they'll be more than happy to help uh, umpires get out there and see some pitches prior to so if you have that opportunity make sure you you go and do it but like it uh, no it was a great day great weekend out in the ball field I had a blast it was good seeing some people and like I said I need a little bit of, of Brent time and clear clear the uh, the uh, six inches between my ears because there was a, a lot going on but I I hope that the, the fort or the uh, well 14 20 and the uh, the hey blue podcast it brings you guys uh, some a little bit of joy today and you guys take take for take this for what it's worth make sure you share it out there if you want to be on the on the the uh, the hey blue podcast uh, sponsored by manscape make sure you get out there or make sure you contact us we're more than happy to have people on the show uh and talk talk baseball and talk umpire because it's uh, it's a passion all of us who are who doing it we're very passionate about it. it's a bit of a weird little cult we got going on but like i said the, the vast improvement that i saw from these guys over the weekend it was it was very good to see there's a there was a one situation as i was leaving the ballpark yesterday i had to, i had to laugh at it because it's a, we have this one of these things where it's ball and a runner and what two things need. There's things we say over and over and over to pound in people's heads over the, uh, over the, the, the winter. Because repetition is how you is uh, is the best way for knowledge. But there was a play right to first base, throw from shortstop down was at first, and I I shouldn't be, be saying his name, but he he knows he he made a mistake, and it was kind of funny because there's a line that I think I stole from Ron Shuchuk that I've been using when I started do, started doing these clinics, and uh, it's one uh, one calls good, two calls bad, and it's a timing situation, right? So if you if the balls Okay, you look, you see, you see the ball, yep, yeah, ball's in the glove, the guy just foot's in the base, take your time, look, yeah, cut, pause, read, react, the whole bit. Well, Dan, he punched this guy out at first base, and not not half the second before his uh, his foot planted, he basically, uh, the ball started rolling away, right? So it was like, uh-oh, that's, uh, that's not good, because he, uh, when the ball's rolling away, the guy couldn't have been out, and Dan's like, oh, he pointed to his chest, so that's, that's that one's on me, that one's on me. So, Dan, this one's for you. Uh, one call is good, two calls is bad. So no, it's it's a situation we've all done it a time or two. It's just funny when 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 you see that. And Dan Dan laughed about it afterwards, and we had a we had a chuckle about it last night when we were messaging back and forth. So it's good that you can you can laugh at those kind of things and uh, and, and go from there because it's very uh, it's very it can be very very hard at times. And I think the biggest thing over the weekend we were it was very positive atmosphere. We were we were having a good time. We were smiling, and, and that helps that helps a lot because like I said, guys can get a little bit revved up and they. Can get a little bit overwhelmed with the scenarios they get in and uh, when there's uh, a few smiles being had and remember that it's we're out there for fun yeah we're making a couple of bucks and everything else but if you're not having fun the money ain't worth it and we, we were having a good time this weekend it's a positive atmosphere the teams were were putting in a good effort the games were actually decent for, for their first games of the year their first times outside too right so the games weren't too bad at all uh they they were quick to one inning a couple innings went a little bit slow but in general the games were good and we had a positive atmosphere so it was a lot of fun to get out there and umpire again and beat, beat out in the field. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw it on uh, Saturday morning. Anyways, I I have these old plus pause um, 
plate shoes that I got back in 1997, just after I got out of um, the Jim Evans Academy of Umpiring back in that day. And I, I took a picture of those old shoes and I shined them up, uh, got them ready to go. And I thought they were looking pretty good. They're, they're old. There's no getting around that. They're not as fancy as the, as the shoes of, of today, obviously, but they, uh, they, they, they do the trick for me. I, I quite enjoy wearing them. It's uh, it's just one of those things. I I, I laughed at. Uh, I got a few messages on the inbox, and there was one gentleman, and I'm not going to say his name or whatever whatever it is, but uh, he made the a comment about uh, not thinking my shoes were very shined up, and I kind of made a, made a joke. I was just thinking, geez, man, like can you just not like to be a podcaster and to be an umpire, you got to have pretty big shoulders, and you kind of have to let things just brush off your off your back. And I kind of got a chuckle out of that, and I kind of. I thought I'll be this guy's a uh, he's one of those uh, umpire guys right one of those guys that we talked about a few weeks ago the ump the ump show I was thinking this guy's probably the ump show where he doesn't have anything good to say about anybody else or anything too good to say about about anything the, the, those shoes yes I know they're old but I, I take really good care of them they do look good they, they are shined up could they have been a bit bit better yes but the situation I ran into with those shoes, I took them to the, the, the shoemakers in, in Medicine Hat, and he was supposed to get them fixed up a little bit more. Like I said, they do they, they still look quite good for, for the how old they are. But uh, he was supposed to buff them up and everything else. He was supposed to get them. They're not patent leather, just regular leather shoes, not like the, the, the ones that everybody's wearing today. But they, like I said, I, I sprayed them up, the, the, the hairspray trick, the whole bit. But this guy, he just had to make a comment about my shoes not being, uh, not being shined up to his liking or his specification. So I kind of got, I got a chuckle out of that. That's a, that, that, that guy's guaranteed he's Mr. Umpire. The, the, it, nothing's good enough for him. And he's the, he's the best. It's what, it just makes me laugh. Umpire guy, right? Like it's one of those things, Mr. Umpire, whatever we call it. It's just one of those things that he, he's the best and whatever, dude. Like just, like I said, you got to have big shoulders to be an umpire and you got to have big shoulders to be a podcaster. Cause we hear, we get a lot of comments about a lot of things and people don't, people, people don't, don't always like our, our content. So it's a, it's always a funny, funny little thing to maybe snap back a little bit. And if, if he wants to come on the show, and talk about the the uh how um undone my shoes where he's more than welcome to uh to come on and, and, and talk about that but uh no it was a lot of fun getting back to talk about umpire and over the weekend a lot about fun getting back in the field a lot of fun doing this show today the hey blue podcast make sure you guys check out our youtube channel this will this will be up on there later today thank you for everybody everybody for listening we also have our merchandise up on uh, spreadshirt.com slash 1420. I can't remember what it is. I'll put it up in the show notes today so you guys can go out there and get your Hey Blue uh, paraphernalia and apparel and merchandise and the whole bit. I saw uh, a guy was wearing one at the ballpark this week and he had a nice nice, nice hoodie on and so everything else. So uh, make sure you guys support our show, support the umpires around the world and everything else and make sure you're helping out the younger guys to make sure that they're getting a little bit better. Like I said, the vast improvement that the two guys had that were out there this weekend, it was it was, uh, it was very I was very, uh, I was very happy to see it and I I got a I feel a bit bit of a fatherly pride, even though they're about my age anyway. So they were they were working hard and they had a great time out there. And uh, when you're working hard and things are going good and, and you have you have a little more confidence, you want to be out there a little bit more. And I think that's how what we got to do with a lot more umpires. We got more, another clinic this weekend for the little league guys here in Lethbridge <clears throat> that we're going to take care of. We got a lot of other stuff going on, but make sure you guys uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and uh, listen to the show and tell other people listen to the show. Like I said, if you want to be on the 1420 podcast or the Hey Blue podcast or whatever it is you want to talk umpiring or just baseball in general get a hold of me and we'll uh, we'll get you on the air it's a lot of fun anyways starting to ramble here but uh, remember everybody have a good day and uh, we'll talk to you guys soon and remember as always one call's good two calls are bad have a good day folks and we will talk to you again on oh i don't even know let's do it friday you just listened to the 1420 sports bar podcast Four beer of the sports talk and a whole lot more. We are part of the Belly Up Media Network. Let's get into it.